Welcome to the third lecture, example of three pair trades in the how to successfully pair trade stocks training course. Before we get into showing you example of pair trades, I'm first going to explain how pair trading signals are derived using nothing more than the prices of two stocks. To measure the relationship between two stocks, PTF creates what's known as the ratio between two stocks. The ratio is a simple calculation of the first stock price divided by the second stock price. For example, if the first stock in a pair has a stock price of $20 and the second stock has a stock price of $10, then the ratio would be 2.0. Each day, PTF calculates the ratio for the pair of stocks and stores the ratio for the pair based on the stock closing prices. This allows the software to track the relationship between the pair. So for example, on Monday, the pair might have a ratio of 2.0, Tuesday might be 2.02, Wednesday might be 2.01, Thursday might be 2.04, etc. Then PTF measures the standard deviation of the ratio, or in other words, what the average daily movement of the ratio is. In addition to measuring the daily standard deviation of the ratio, PTF will measure the moving average of the ratio calculated off the previous 100 trading days. So it will calculate what the average ratio price has been over the past 100 trading days. A trading signal is then generated once the current ratio price is more than 2.7 standard deviations away from the average ratio. For those familiar with Bollinger Bands, it's the exact same thing, except we're applying Bollinger Bands on the ratio instead of the stock price itself. Then once the current ratio price comes back within one standard deviation of the 100-day ratio average, an exit signal is generated. Since the signals are based off the 100-day ratio moving average, an exit signal will always be generated at some point. So here is an example of the ratio chart between Coke and Pepsi. As you can see, the green line here is the daily ratio, and the blue line is the average ratio over the last 100 days. And this is the actual ratio number. And as you can see, the ratio always comes back to its average at some point. As you can see, unlike typical technical indicators, the trading signals generated by PTF are clear cut and will show exactly what price to enter, enter and exit. Our job as pair traders is to filter trading signals for genuine mispricings. However, we'll dive deeper into that lecture in Lecture 7. Okay, now to give you a basic understanding of what a pair trade looks like. Let's look at some trading signals. For now, we'll ignore the filtering aspect of signals and just focus on the raw signals and how they look. So here is a chart of Google versus Yahoo pair inside PTF. And for those of you who have PTF open, if you go to your home page, select a pair and then click on pair charts in the top window. This will open up this window we're seeing right here. And in this window you can see the closing prices for Google on each day. So the 2nd of September, the 3rd of September, that was the closing prices for Google and Yahoo. So basically these two columns are showing the closing prices for each day, for each stock. And over here we have the ratio chart for Google versus Yahoo. And this is the plus minus chart, or which is also the standard deviation chart. So here's what a trading signal looks like in PTF. As you can see, the date, the 12th of September, green means a buy. So there was a buy signal to buy Google at $575.62. And there was a short signal to short sell Yahoo at $42.88. And then seven days later, there was an exit signal, as indicated by this blue color here. And so there was an exit for $587.37 and to cover your shorts at $38.65. So as you can see we made money on the long side with the exit price higher than the entry long price and we also made money on the short side of the pair as we covered our short lower than what we sold it for. Okay, so now we'll show you how to work out the position sizing for pairs. So assuming that you want $10,000 exposure on each leg of the pair, 
this is how you'll work out your position size. First, if you open up your calculator, if you punch in the number 10,000, then divide that by Google's entry price, $575.62, you'll get the number 17.37. And likewise on Yahoo, if you start with 10,000 on your calculator, divide that by the entry price, 42.88, that will equal 233.20. So we're going to round that to the nearest whole number, and that will mean we'll buy 17 shares of Google, and we'll short 233 shares of Yahoo. And that will make sure that we have an equal amount of dollar exposure on each side of the pair. So your total position size should be $10,000 long and $10,000 short. Okay, let's work out how much we made on this trade. So let's work out how much we made on the long leg of the trade. We exited at 587 and 37 cents, minus what we entered at the price, equals the difference of $11.75. That's how much we made on the long side in the movement of the stock price. Likewise for the short side, we sold it at 42.88 and we bought it back at 38.65, meaning we made 4.23 points on the short side. So in dollar terms, on our long side, we made 11.75 points multiplied by the 17 shares we purchased equals 199.75. Likewise on the short, we made 4.23 points on the trade, multiply it by our position size of 233 shares equals $985.59. And when we add those two numbers together, we get a total profit on the pair trade of $1,185.34. So if we invested a total amount of $20,000, uh, $10,000 on each leg, the return on investment would be 5.92%. Or if we were trading on margin and had to put up 50% of the total position size, that means we would have had to put up $10,000. Our return on margin would have been 11.85%. Okay, let's go on to another example. Here's the pair charts window in PTF again. And this time we're looking at the pair Costco versus Target. For those of you who aren't familiar, these are two large retailers in America. And they're large cap stocks and they trade uh, very similar because they've got very similar businesses. So here on the left side you can see the closing prices for Costco on each day and for Target. This column here, the plus minus column, is showing you each day how many standard deviations the pair is currently away from its mean. So for example here on the 3rd of October the pair was currently 0.37 standard deviations above its mean. So for the software to generate a signal to enter the pair, it, the pair has to be at least 2.7 standard deviations away from its mean, and then it'll exit once it comes back within one standard deviation of its mean. This column here is the percent from the mean. It's showing you the percentage difference between the current ratio, which is this green line, and the average ratio, which is this blue line. So when the when the pair diverges up here, the percent from the mean will go higher, and then when it comes back lower, it'll get lower. So that will co correlate with the standard deviations, and it's something you can use to judge the the profit potential in a trade, and also something you can use to judge your position sizing as well because the more volatile a pair, the lower your position size should be. But we'll get deeper into that later in the course. So you can see the signal was generated on the 10th of October. It was to short Costco at 128.90 and simultaneously go long target at 60.59. Two days later, there was an exit signal on the 14th. That was to buy back our short position at 126.25 and to sell our long position at 
Okay, again, let's use a example of wanting to open a position size equal to $25,000 in exposure on both sides of the leg. Again, we start with 25,000. So on your calculator, you can punch in 25,000 divided by the entry price equals how many shares to short for the long leg, 25,000 divided by the entry price equals 412.60. Round that to the nearest whole number. So we would buy 413 shares of Target and we would short 194 shares of Costco. Again, for the working out the profit on the trade, on the long leg of the trade, we sold at 61.69, purchased it at 60.59, and made $1.1 on the long. For the short, we shorted 128.90, covered at 126.25, for a profit of 2.65 points. And to work out the profit in dollar terms, how many points we made, multiplied by our position size, which means we made $454.30 on the long leg of the trade. And again for the short leg. And when we add the profits up from the, both the long and short leg, you can see we made a total profit of $968.48. So the total amount invested was 50,000, which gave us a return on investment of 1.93%. Margin at 50% means we would have had to put up 25,000, with a return on margin at 3.87%. Okay, for the last example, this pair is Goldman Sachs versus Morgan Stanley, two large investment banks in America. Again, you can see the ratio chart, the green lines, the daily current ratio price and the blue line is the 100 day average ratio and this is the actual ratio numbers up here and you can see my charts are set to show the last 365 days of data so we're looking at a year's worth of data here again here's the plus minus chart or also the standard deviation chart as what some people refer to it as and you can see when the pair gets around 2.5 standard deviations from the mean, it often starts reverting back closer to its average. So the software gave us a signal to enter the pair on the 20th of March in 2014. There's our long price, there's our short price. It was 3.05 standard deviation below its mean, or 5.5. 4.2 percentage below its mean and then on the 3rd of the 4th we got an exit signal and as you can see the, we sold it at a price lower than what we purchased it so we made a loss on the long side however we made a good profit on the short side by covering our short position at 30.95 and as you can see pairs come within one standard deviation from its mean and hence why the software it gave us an exit signal. Okay, assuming you wanted to trade position size of $5,000 a leg, again you would divide the long price by your position size, same for your short, round it to the nearest number, so we would buy 30 shares of Goldman Sachs, short 152 shares of Morgan Stanley, and each position size should be $5,000, so we're always dollar neutral. For the profit on it, again, we subtract the selling, sold price by the buy price. We lost 3.13 points on the long side of the trade. We made 1.84 points on the short side of the trade, but because we had many more shares on the short side of the trade than the long side, we ended up making a profit overall. Total amount invested was 10,000. ROI was 1.85%, or ROI on the margin was 3.71%.
We position size so that we're dollar neutral, meaning we have an equal amount of longs as we do shorts in dollar terms. We don't position size according to the beta of each stock because beta is a constantly changing value and ideally you should be only pair trading two stocks that have a similar beta values. For those of you who don't know beta is a measure of stocks volatility relative to the market. So for example the stock market index whether that be the S&P 500, the FTSE 100 or the ASX 200 the beta of the index is 1.0 and typically large defensive stocks have lower stock price volatility and lower beta values and small cap stocks like miners and biotechnology no stocks have high beta values. So you shouldn't pair a small volatile stock with a large defensive stock. This concludes the third lecture and you're now ready to move on to the fourth lecture.